Hello. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, okay. All right, good Sunday evening, everybody. I'm David Paul, Chief Meteorologist here at KHOU 11 News. You're in the 11 Weather Center. We have a tremendously complicated and difficult tropical forecast. Uh, two systems that may or may not give us direct impacts. Let's go over everything. There's a lot of moving parts with this. First of all, Tropical Storm Laura. Winds are now 60 miles an hour. It is a strong tropical storm. It is uh, between Cuba and Jamaica right now. You can see the uh, brighter cloud tops there on our infrared enhanced satellite. Let me set your bearings. Here's the big map. Here's Houston. That is Laura. And that is Marco. And it looks like the two storms may actually end up interacting with each other as we head toward the middle of next week. And that makes the forecast that much more complicated. This may be the most difficult tropical forecast that I've ever encountered. I know it is. Uh, maybe one for the history books as far as difficulty of forecasting landfall for a major city. So Laura is going to move into the Gulf. Here's Marco eventually, we think, skirting the coast of Louisiana. Let's take a look at the forecast tracks for Laura. First of all, there's Laura. No I yet. Really needs to be a cat one before you'll get it, an I forming. And as it's interacting with land, Cuba, it will stay a tropical storm as it interacts with land. But once it gets over the open waters of the Gulf of Mexico, conditions out here are actually quite favorable for rapid development. And as we get into Wednesday afternoon, early afternoon, the forecast right now is for it to be a cat two. Winds of 105 miles an hour sustained. It's possible it could be stronger, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. The center of that forecast cone right now takes it into Lake Charles, Louisiana, but you can see that Houston and Southeast Texas, we are in that forecast cone. We're squarely in the western side of that cone. So Houston, Galveston, we are in play for the potential for a strong Cat 2, maybe even a major Cat 3 hurricane. Again, more on the intensity uncertainty in just a moment. As far as the track goes, take a look at the latest spaghetti plot. So these are all the different arms of all the tropical models. We put them together. And there really are two consensus right now with Laura. One cluster takes it further to the west towards southeast Texas or southwest Louisiana. Another cluster takes it toward New Orleans. All of them are riding around the edge of a big ridge of high pressure sitting out here. So they're just riding around the merry-go-round. But exactly where it's going to make that turn on the western edge of the ridge is what everything is in question about. And normally that's the only question we have to to worry about, but because there are two systems that may interact, it's going to complicate things. At the moment, this cluster is just east of the immediate Houston Galveston area, but that's too close to, for comfort. So, with uh, that type of a forecast, you need to consider the possibility that it, we may end up taking a direct hit from it. It is possible. There is a chance of a Texas impact. Those chances are increasing. All hurricane prep should be underway. Uh, do you have food and water and medicine to last you a week for everybody in the house? Uh, do you have supplies so that you can basically camp out at your house and stay put in case there are a lot of trees down and no one can come and get you? Um, all that being said, significant uncertainty remains in the forecast track. We saw the spread of the computer models on Laura, and now we're going to go over and talk about uh, Marco here. Oh, first of all, if Laura were to give us a direct hit, we would have very strong damaging winds, and they would be well inland. Uh, with our last Cat 3 hurricane, which was Alicia in 1983, we had trees down, lots of them, all the way up to Huntsville. So all of Southeast Texas would be impacted by a strong Cat 2, Cat 3 storm like that. There would be significant surge in Galveston and Bolivar. And that forecast, again, if it were to come right at us, could trigger evacuations for the coast. That's where you listen to your county officials to know if that uh, evacuation had been issued or not. At KHOU.com, in the hurricane section, we have the, the maps that are used county by county by our county officials to issue uh, evacuations for coastal and low-lying areas. And they're all in stages in different colors, and I would encourage you to spend some time at KHOU.com in the hurricane section. There's so much information there about preparing, what to expect, what to do, and a lot more about 
evacuations if they were to be called for. Okay, now to Marco. Marco's a hurricane, minimal hurricane, winds of 75 miles an hour. There's the storm. There's Louisiana, New Orleans. There's Houston right there. The storm right now is moving almost due north pretty quickly at 13 miles an hour. This one still has not made that westward turn, but we think it will as it catches that western edge of that ridge of high pressure I showed you. So here is Marco, Category 1 hurricane, minimal Cat 1 hurricane. It is a lopsided system as we expected. It's being sheared. You can see how everything's being pushed off to the north and east. The trough out here with very strong upper level winds. That is shearing and lopsiding the storm. So you're really going to have to get along the center and to the right of the center to get really much of anything out of Marco. The forecast track for Marco is interesting. This is the official forecast track from the Hurricane Center, and they have it Cat 1. They have it making a, a left turn here pretty quickly, but even at the moment, it's moving north. So even now, again, a, a forecast from the Hurricane Center is being busted. But this is what we have right now. The forecast is for it to eventually turn west, graze New Orleans, graze across the coast of Louisiana, weaken as it does so, and then perhaps put a tropical depression over us going into Wednesday morning and Wednesday afternoon. And that would drag in breezy conditions and scattered showers and thunderstorms. It's possible this type of thing could bring in at least a slight flash flooding threat for Houston. So that's Marco. We don't think it would be a major hurricane impact for us, but it could bring rain. Here are the spaghetti plots on Marco. And here's where things really start to get complicated and very difficult to forecast. And this is something that I have never had to forecast. What you're seeing here, see how so many of these spaghetti plots are now going this way and then, whoop, they stop and they curly cue back around and then head north. Here's another one, goes out, stops, comes back, curly cues back to the north. There are a bunch of them in here that now, just in the, this has just started happening this afternoon with these runs. Started putting in this hook where it's moving west, and then it stops, makes a curly cue, and then heads north. Now, what in the world would make it do that? Well, if the two storms interact, we would have something called the Fujihara effect. Two storms getting close enough to interact with each other. Usually, you have one parent storm, and that would be Laura, who would be in a position like this, stronger storm, Cat 2, and then this would be Marco, the weaker storm, and as the two interact with each other, what you end up getting is the stronger storm is going to pull like that on the weaker storm. That motion is why, you know, Marco at first is moving to the west, and then now all of a sudden, it, er, putting the brakes on, curving, and making that curve. It's because many of those Tropical computer models are suggesting that, yeah, we're going to see the Fujiwara effect in full, in full effect right in front of our eyes as we head into uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. One storm pulling on the other and impacting the eventual track of it. So, so remember this. You've got, you've got Laura here. You've got Marco here. And they're going to pull on each other. So let's look at these forecast tracks. This is the forecast. Here comes Laura, Cat 2. Here's Marco weakening, but even in this position, they would be close enough to where they would be interacting with each other, at least beginning to. The parent storm, Laura, probably wouldn't see much track influence here as it moves in, but, but because of the very strong counterclockwise circulation around Laura, you would see that begin to pull and tug on Marco back to the south and west. This is going into Wednesday night, early Thursday morning, and there's, this looks exactly like the diagram now. There's Laura, still Cat 2, here's Marco, and that's why we're getting this, these forecast arms that are stopping Marco in its tracks and turning it back, pulling it back out to sea, and then following, being pulled, influenced by Laura's stronger dominant circulation. That's the Fujihara effect. That is incredibly difficult to forecast an exact track for. So this is one where literally two, three times a day, you got to check back and see what the forecast changes are. And it may be just when these storms start getting close, it's just going to be moment to moment to see how they tug on each other and exactly where the center and the worst of the wind and rain and storm surge will end up being. It's a time to stay very, very close, as close as you ever have to a weather forecast for southeast Texas. And then there's the eventual 
finishing track as Laura heads well inland, and I'm not exactly sure how, how Marco is going to play out. It does eventually get pulled back around if that Fujiwara takes place at all. Even that's not set in stone. Now, all that being said, there's another issue, and that is with the intensity forecast of Laura. So here's Laura coming out of Cuba and about to enter into the Gulf of Mexico. This will be tomorrow. And here's Marco, now forecast uh, to head towards southwest Louisiana here as a Cat 1. Now Marco is being influenced by this shear. Remember how we talked about that shear is, is ripping the storm apart a little bit. It's lopsiding the storm. It's also keeping the storm from becoming a Cat 2 or a Cat 3. That shear tilts the storm over and makes it difficult for the storm to strengthen. So that's being heavily sheared. We're not worried about Marco becoming a major. But look at, look at the clear conditions in front of Laura. That is concerning. Marco still being sheared, interacting with land, weakening. Laura entering very positive conditions for, for strengthening. And that, this, is, this is concerning because at this point, that's not wind shear the model's picking up. That's the circulation being so strong, it's worked its way up through the atmosphere. <clears throat> and I know the forecast right now from the Hurricane Center says a 1. I have, I have uh, encountered forecasts like this where the, the intensity ends up being two or three categories higher than what the Hurricane Center is putting out. Intensity forecasts are the most difficult part of a hurricane, forecasting intensity. It's very complicated, but that concerns me that we may actually have a two or a three in there as we go into Wednesday. <sighs> so here's the way it looks on the seven day. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, scattered showers, 30, 40% chance, and then we will have to wait and see how the two tracks, the intensity, and the possible Fujiwara effect all influence the eventual outcome track of Laura and Marco. The only thing to do in a situation like this where we've, we've got a bowling ball, we just don't know exactly who it's going to hit, it could hit us, is to be prepared. You want to have food, water, medicine to survive on your own for at least four or five days so that if we do get a big one and trees are down and you can't and no one can get in and out of your neighborhood or your apartment complex or wherever you live, you don't need anybody. You can stay right where you are. That's why we get supplies for hurricane season every year. So you don't have to get out in the madness. You can stay where you are. Um, and we will have the complete update and updated forecast tracks. We're going to have updated uh, forecast cones from the Hurricane Center at 10 o'clock tonight. Uh, we'll see you on the uh, KHO 11 News at 10 for a complete update. Download the app. Um, turn on notifications. The weather section on the app, we're constantly updating with updates as they come in so you can stay very close to all the changes as they roll on in and stay close to this forecast as we head into what's going to be a very, very busy and possibly dangerous middle part of this week. We'll see you at 10 o'clock with all the updated computer models and updated forecast tracks.